The U.S. is getting tough on Chinese companies. It could be kicked off U.S. stock exchanges if they don't open their books to U.S. regulators. Welcome to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. We've been saying for a while now that the U.S. needs to decouple from China's economy if the U.S. wants to remain the world's superpower. Well, the U.S. and China might be getting slightly closer to doing just that. There are currently 261 Chinese stocks listed on U.S. stock exchanges. Last month, the U.S. and China reached a deal that would allow U.S. regulators complete access to those Chinese companies' financial documents. To which you might be wondering, wait, U.S. regulators don't already have access? And yes, that's right. They don't. And that's been a huge problem. For example, the Chinese company Luckin Coffee. They were listed on the NASDAQ stock exchange. Americans bought their stocks like hotcakes, thinking, oh, this could be a good competitor to Starbucks. But then it turned out Luckin Coffee had faked $300 million in sales. And when that was discovered in 2020, their stock plummeted, and U.S. investors lost billions. They could have never committed such a giant fraud if U.S. regulators had been allowed to audit their books in the first place. And it's not just luck and coffee. For years, American investors have been pouring money into hundreds of Chinese companies through exchanges like NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange. But unlike every other company on those exchanges, U.S. auditors aren't allowed access to verify whether what Chinese companies were telling investors was true. That's because the Chinese Communist Party only allowed Chinese companies to be audited by Chinese auditing companies. And it made sure those audits had no U.S. oversight. The Communist Party claimed that by opening their books to U.S. auditors, Chinese companies could be giving away state secrets. Wall Street didn't like China stonewalling either, but hey, when the goose keeps producing golden eggs, do you really need to inspect how those eggs are made? Of course, some of those eggs turned out to be fake gold, like luck and coffee. But hey, you win some, you lose some, right? Some of them still produce golden eggs, for now. So Wall Street put up with this for more than 10 years. If you've seen the movie The China Hustle, you know why. Spoiler alert, it was greed and stupidity. Now, it's not just like the U.S. government watched from the sidelines. The Public Company Accounting Board, or PCAOB, is the regulator that oversees the audits of U.S. listed companies. It tried over and over again to get access to China. So did the Securities and Exchange Commission. In 2013, the PCAOB signed a Memorandum of Understanding with Chinese regulators. It was supposed to make it easier for both countries to share documents with each other. The problem was, it wasn't legally binding. And there were some huge loopholes, too. Like, it only allowed the PCAOB to gain access for investigations of Chinese companies, not for regular audits. So basically, the U.S. could investigate after U.S. investors had been screwed, but couldn't prevent them from getting screwed in the first place. The Memorandum of Understanding also allowed China to withhold documents if they were considered in the public or national interest, which turned out to be almost every document. So almost 10 years after that memorandum was signed, the PCAOB said it was worth about as much as the paper it was written on. That wasn't even the first Memorandum of Understanding they signed, either. They signed an earlier one in 1994 that also wasn't legally binding. And as you can probably guess, it did little to give U.S. regulators access to Chinese companies. Fortunately, a few years ago, Congress stepped in and put its foot down. I'll tell you how after the break. Welcome back. For years, Chinese companies have basically been able to list on U.S. stock exchanges without being scrutinized by U.S. regulators. The PCAOB and the SEC were pretty much shut out of looking at Chinese companies' documents for quote-unquote national security reasons. So in 2020, Congress passed a bill that Trump signed into law. It forced companies to comply with U.S. auditing rules or get kicked off U.S. stock exchanges. 
It was called the Holding Foreign Companies Accountable Act, although it really should have been called the Holding China Accountable Act. That's because China is the only country that doesn't comply with U.S. auditing requirements. The bill also makes companies disclose whether they have a Chinese Communist Party official on their board or whether they're chartered by the party. So clearly this wasn't aimed at countries like the UK or Germany. The law also says companies have to allow the PCAOB to inspect their accounting. If they don't allow that access for three years in a row, they'll be delisted from US stock markets. The law went into effect in 2021, so Chinese companies that don't comply could be delisted as soon as 2024, which is still a ridiculously generous timeline. Now, with this law forcing China to let U.S. regulators in or face being cut off from U.S. capital markets, China came to the table. But before it did, five state-owned enterprises delisted from U.S. stock exchanges. And yes, I said state-owned enterprises. Which raises the question, why did the U.S. allow state-owned companies from a genocidal regime to list on U.S. stock exchanges in the first place? Spoiler alert, it was greed and stupidity. But anyway, these five enterprises took themselves off U.S. exchanges shortly before a deal with U.S. regulators was announced. And obviously in that regulatory statement that, the, um, that you mentioned there, they didn't actually mention the delisting. They said that these companies had their own business reasons for delisting. But you, but you have to figure, if they saw the writing on the wall that they're going to potentially get delisted, that they were trying to be proactive about this. Or maybe it was because they didn't want U.S. regulators to discover that the only thing they were reliably manufacturing was lies. So with those state-owned enterprises gone, in a totally not suspicious way at all, China agreed to give the U.S. unfettered access to Chinese companies' financial documents. But there's a big fat asterisk next to that. The agreement does, in theory, give U.S. regulators pretty much full access to see any document or talk to anyone in China they want. But U.S. officials and politicians are pretty skeptical that China is actually going to comply with the thing they agreed to. The head of the PCAOB said the real test will be whether the words agreed to on paper translate into complete access in practice. The head of the SEC warned that the proof will be in the pudding. And Senator John Kennedy, one of the sponsors of the Holding Foreign Companies Accountable Act, called it only a first step in a long journey. And it's not just because of China's poor track record of working with the SEC. China has a long history of lies and broken promises like how the U.S.-China trade deal that Trump negotiated fell apart when China effectively bought none of the $200 billion in goods it promised to buy. China also never cracked down on fentanyl being sent from China to the U.S. like it said it would. And China famously said it wasn't going to militarize islands in the South China Sea, but then did just that. Sorry, I, I'm not sure how all those anti-aircraft guns got there. They must have just washed ashore. If China does give the U.S. unfettered access, though, it could be a sign that China is worried about losing U.S. dollars. The new agreement appears to reflect recent concerns of officials in Beijing, who are struggling to manage a sharply slowing economy. For years, Wall Street has been a big cash cow for Beijing. Foreign investment was just like a tap that kept pouring money on China's economy, and it didn't turn off no matter how risky Chinese investments were. That was thanks to useful idiots like BlackRock, and Bridgewater Associates, which encouraged investors to increase their investments in Chinese assets. It's not clear exactly how much China stands to lose if all China-based companies are forced to delist in the U.S. But according to the SEC, around 200 companies are in the crosshairs. That's either a lot of golden eggs or a lot of rotten ones, and soon we're going to find out. And this episode has been sponsored by you. With YouTube ad revenue being so low, we rely on viewer support to help us keep making this show. And as a thank you to our supporters on Patreon and Locals, I'll answer their questions at the end of some of our episodes. Today's question comes from Eric Hedgeblom on Patreon. How did a man like Gorbachev rise in a system that he helped tear down? The CCP seems to believe it was a mistake that he ever came to power. Could such an anomaly ever occur in China? Good question, Eric. When Gorbachev came to power in 1985, the Soviet Union was facing an economic disaster. 
At the beginning, Gorbachev's ideas for fixing the Soviet economy required just minor changes. It was only when those initial reforms failed to create economic growth that he decided that the Soviet Union also needed political reform. He thought political reform could force changes to the bureaucratic status quo that was holding the economy back. But that led to much more political reform than he bargained for, and the Soviet Union collapsed in 1991. Yes, Gorbachev was praised for ending the Soviet Union, but that's history looking back. I believe his intention when he first took up his position was to save the Soviet Union, not end it. So to answer your question, Gorbachev rose to power because after a series of really bad Soviet leaders, he appeared to be the best guy available to fix the system. And I guess he was, just not in the way anyone predicted. What does this mean with respect to China and Xi Jinping? Only history will tell, and unfortunately history usually takes a really long time. Thanks for your question, Eric. And thank you to everyone who watches China Uncensored. If you like this show and want to see it continue, head on over to the crowdfunding site Patreon or the exclusive social media site Locals. Links to both are in the description below. Those are the best places you can directly support this show. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching China Uncensored.